Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why do Magic the Gathering players cheat? And it might not be as simple as you might expect. Many of you might say, oh, you just like the feeling of winning. But we're going to talk about it at many different levels. Recently, Yuya, who is a Pro Tour Hall of Fame member, who is a Mythic member who gets paid $75,000 plus a year and gets to play at a million dollars plus tournament, guaranteed entry, guaranteed Hall of Fame entry fee where because he's such a famous Magic player, he gets money for attending any events relating to Magic the Gathering. Why he would cheat is beyond my understanding because he made it. There is not a single thing accomplishments he was voted 90% of people voted him into Hall of Fame. That's crazy for any type of Hall of Fame. Why or did he cheat? And this is what we're going to talk about. Because my conclusion is it's not always about money. It's not always about fame or reputation. He had all of these. You couldn't be more famous as a Magic player than him. You couldn't have more money in terms of sponsorship. His sponsor actually came out to defend him so obviously that was a good relationship that he had with them that they were willing to publicly um, support him even when things were not looking that what uh, that great so someone who has everything in magic uses a very very poorly executed cheat gets caught and then lies some more about not cheating he still is he doesn't come out and say he's innocent he just comes out and says that there's not enough evidence to prove that i'm guilty that's a very very interesting statement that there's not enough evidence to prove that i'm guilty his sponsor and his friends also sponsored by the same company have come out and say that he is innocent and he's not guilty so when we look at what owen and owen's friends are doing it's a very drastic difference. You have Owen's friends like Reed Duke and Huey and Shahar Shahar and other people not say anything. They have been completely, completely silent on this issue while you have Yuya and his friends just making as much noise as they can to assert that he would never cheat. One of the assertions is, why would someone who would lose everything by cheating and had very little to gain do it? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, in the larger scope, like Friday Night Magic or pre-release or a PTQ, I don't think we have PTQs anymore, but whatever replaced them, the Mythic PTQ version of it, uh, we have situations where uh, let's take Friday Night Magic. It's a casual event. Everyone's there on a Friday night, meaning they have probably given up opportunities to do something else, to be there Friday, because they enjoy the game. Uh, you go play, and then somebody cheats you. And I would say a large majority of players have been cheated, and it all it takes is one cheater, and it ruins everybody's game. It Even if that you never played a cheater, the matches are different now because instead of winning, instead of losing that cheater would win and then they go into different, it's a different matching. So that cheater, even if they only cheat one time, is affecting every single player in that room. Maybe instead of playing this player, I would have played that player and my matchup was better because I'm an aggro deck and I'm playing a slow control deck, but because the cheater messed up everyone's points and the, not the cheater didn't mess up the points. The cheater ma messed up the match results. I'm playing a deck that I'm not good against. I'm playing a mid-range deck that has life gain. It is very scary to think that somebody who has everything to lose and very little to gain, very, very little to gain would still cheat. Uh, people cheat to win more packs. People cheat to win pre-release, to win that box. People cheat to win. Um, and I think that uh, Magic, um, let's say you take your FNM or pre-release, you can't really prevent a cheater from joining, right? And A, you wouldn't know they were a cheater initially. 
But even if you knew someone's cheating, unless you had hard evidence, and hard evidence is very difficult to come by because, you know, when you think about magic as a game, you can always say, oh, that was a mistake, or you can blame your opponent, something like Saito did for many years and was very successful at doing so. I'm just going to speak from experience. I have been cheated many times. I reported it several times. But for me, at some point in time, you know, f and I'm going there because I like Magic and I want to play with people who like Magic too. And Magic the Gathering is such a diverse community. And one of the best selling points still today to me is you can go anywhere with a deck of Magic. You don't even need a deck of Magic cards. You can draft. You can play the game. You can have fun with people you've never met before and you will never meet again. I had one very close magic friend called Gavin when I was in law school, and he was a great friend. We used to walk to firehouse subs all the time in the hot heat. I don't know why we did that. We both had cars, so I don't know why we did that. He wouldn't cheat. I wouldn't cheat because there's something more valuable than just winning a game or winning a pack. Um, There's that community aspect. If you value your community, then the last thing you want to do is be caught cheating because you're going to be isolated um, or stealing. Stealing is also as worse as cheating, in my opinion. And cheating is stealing, even if there's a $5 prize support that technically is stealing. Especially when there's a million dollar prize support, then that's really, really stealing. Community is so different in magic um, and that's why I'm very removed from it um, I get lots and lots of hate comments and hate emails and ha- just lots of hate because I cover let's say the negative part of the community um, I do so because no one else does it everyone else is so interested in donations and e-begging and um, things of that nature that they won't They won't openly discuss how they feel on issues like judges who may harass people, uh, Yuya. Um, I think it comes down, there are a few individuals in the community who are much more open in what they talk about and are like me, but that's really the exception. The majority of them want to be sponsored. And if you're sponsored by Card Kingdom, are you ever going to talk bad about them? No. They wouldn't pay you money if they thought that would be the case. Or as soon as you did, they would get rid of you. Or a TCG player or so on. So positivity, I'll let other people handle that. I'll deal with the negativity of our community, which needs to be addressed. Uh, if somebody like you can cheat, then somebody at your f and or your pre-release will definitely cheat. Just look at it. You had everything to lose and nothing to gain. Yet he still cheated. At f and you can win a box. Maybe sell the box. Maybe you need rent. Um, in my life, I find that um, you can only control your own actions. The actions of other people, although you can try to predict what they will be based on, you know, our prediction here would be Yuya, $75,000. Hall of Fame, 95, 90% vote into Hall of Fame. Sponsored out the wazoo. Heavily promoted. Very popular streamer. This type of person would never cheat in front of judges at a Mythic Invitational for a million dollars. On paper, we would assume that this would be somebody we wouldn't need to deck check ever. We just assume he's good because he's been good for 20 plus years. But I, after owning a business, I know that your resume is not a good indicator of if you fit the business culture or if you actually enjoy do you enjoy working here your resume is just a piece of paper with some stuff that you made up on it that you believed was important whether or not that you're a good employee for me will depend on how hard you work uh, how much work you get done do you like everyone else here do you work well together can you communicate when there's a problem and that's the main asset i look for right now is i don't care we hired a gas station cashier. We've hired people. The majority of people we hire have no education. And before I go into too much of it, they do live with their parents at home. Just the majority of people. 
given the circumstances. I'm not hiring people from Rice University. I'm not hiring people from NYU or William Mary Law School. I'm hiring people who live in Humble. I keep it local because I believe in it. I truly, truly believe in it. Um, sometimes I have my doubts, and you'll, you'll see that on my other channel. Sometimes I will, you know, when an iPad goes missing or four iPad pencils go missing from the same person, I, I lose a little bit of faith um, in what, um, my core belief is my core belief is if you give someone an opportunity like you gave that you gave you and you set them up to become the face of your company or you promote them and you treat them like human beings I do not believe in unpaid internships I have fought tooth and nail on my other channel about this with other people who don't agree with me I don't believe in it because I don't think there's any future in it. Um, there's no future in paying an unpaid intern because if you're not even going to pay them 10 or 15 or or minimal pay is going to probably raise to 18 or $20 an hour and they're taking money to travel there, they're spending gas money, they're spending their time, they're eating lunch at a place that is more expensive because they're eating out. If you're not going to invest in them for that amount of money, you're not going to put your time in because your time is far more valuable than 10 or $15 an hour, right? That gets to my end conclusion. It's all about community. Um, it's about magic community. A lot of people think I'm not part of the magic community. Um, the guy who I was talking to who was sick for three years, who, he, if you try to talk to Wedge, Wedge won't respond. I will. He's in trouble. He's been sick for three years. He has not had a job during that time. Uh, magic means a lot to him, and that's why he assumes I'm a toxic member of the community. I'm willing to send his resume to whoever needs to get his resume to get him a job. I believe in jobs. I believe in job creation. I believe there's nothing better in our community than helping raise each other up. But I don't want... I don't want... The community, I think, is confused as to what magic should be or what magic could be um, they see someone like you yeah they see someone like other youtubers and they see that all the donations they get and the patreon and for every ten dollars or a hundred dollars somebody has to work for that money and the majority of people who are donating on patreon they're working nine to five jobs they're paying hourly wages so instead of working, you know, using their ten dollars an hour at Walmart, Walmart actually pays fourteen, by the way, fourteen dollars an hour. They'll donate it to someone else who's not working. I think the community is strong, and I really do like the community. I'm far more involved in the community than you actually know. But it's on an individual level. It's not grandiose, and my views are my views. I don't hide them. Like I said before, you probably all know who I voted for the, during the election. I didn't hide that. I didn't hide it. Um, and yeah, did I lose patrons? Yeah, did people try to troll me? And I supported Jeremy. Um, I still get co hateful comments about supporting on Sleeve Media uh, Decordling. I met Jeremy in person at an IHOP. And he seemed like a good guy. And that's all I really want. I want to know if you're a good person. Now, your opinions, your beliefs, and all, we can agree to disagree on those. But are you a good person? Do you foster dogs? Or do you talk about fostering dogs and pit bulls and all that? I don't like... I worked at an animal shelter. Actually, when I was in middle school, I worked at a retirement house, then became an animal shelter, and then, then an immigration center. I've done a lot of volunteer work for the organizations I believe in and I've donated but I like to donate my time I find that when you don't donate your time it is really easy to start a charity for you um, if we look at some youtubers they have charities but I would say they are the most they are their own charity I mean a hundred what was it a hundred thousand asking for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is more money than your whole fan base raised for a charity, and they raised it for you. If you believe in something, volunteer. 
put in your time. Use your skills. So the animal shelters I volunteer at, I do marketing for them. They could never afford my marketing agency, but they have tier one marketing because I do it for, for free. I don't charge them. There's no management fee. And they have very good marketing. So whenever a dog comes in, it has good pictures. I, I taught them how to set up a video camera with pictures and they have good videos. That's my core belief. That get strong, help other people who need the help even if they hate you. Even if they are huge wedge fans, I'll help. But always understand that the community isn't our community, my community, my America, your America. It's just America. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs>